Let's just shuffle. Let's just shuffle. Skip. 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 That used to be me. <laughs> now, I'm on the mission to create the perfect shuffle, where every song in the library is less than 50% skippable. What's up? I'm Trent Windsor. We're here in search of the perfect shuffle. It's time for another segment of Clearing Out the Archives, where I shuffle my music and whichever album pops up. That is the album I review song by song. Last time we shuffled our music and the album that popped up was The Allegory by Royce to 59 Royce to 59 has been putting out music since like 1998 when he teamed up with Eminem to form Bad Meets Evil. And since then he's been delivering on lyrical rap and he's pretty skilled. This year he released The Allegory which actually got nominated for the Grammy for Best Rap Album of the Year. Whoa, this is worthless. It's less than worthless, my boy. Did it really deserve the nomination? Let's find out as I review this album song by song. Before we go any further, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. It really helps me out and uh, it's free, so why not? We're gonna do this tier list style because there are a lot of tiers to go through. We're going to first talk about the skits, the songs that aren't songs, and then we're gonna go S, A, B, C, D. The first skit is called Ice Cream, and uh, we find out in this skit that the Ice Cream Truck song is super racist. The second little skit is called Generation is Broken, and it's really more of just an interlude. It's like 10 seconds long. Third, we've got Miss Grace, which has a six-year-old girl identifying bullets as her dad places them in her hand. There's a black man's favorite shoe, which just has a straight up racist dude talking about how he hates black people and he shoots a pair of Jordans because black people like Jordans. There's the song Perspective, which kind of goes over the black influence on music and how most types of music really started with black people. And last we have Black People in America, which is where we find out that apparently black people don't need shots. We'll come back to that a little bit later. Obviously these are all skits, none of them get a rating from me, I probably will delete them from my personal library, but that doesn't mean that uh, this album has any less merit because of them. In the S tier we have the song On the Block featuring Oswin Benjamin and DJ Premier. DJ Premier and Royce to 5'9 have worked together a lot in the past, so it's a dynamic duo to be sure. It has a pretty smoky, vintage, lo-fi sound, which is pretty sick. And ice cold verses from both collaborators on here. Royce the 5'9 is very skilled, and you can guarantee on every single song, no matter what, he's gonna deliver on a great verse. He's gonna give you something worth listening to. There's the song Thou Shall featuring Kid Vicious. It's got this Western theme inspired beat. Conjures up like images of like a, a showdown, a duel in the middle of the street in front of the saloon or whatever. He's got this great line about how the nozzle on his gun is bigger than the one on that Gaga lady. I also like how this song is dynamic. It changes with the feature and of course Kid Vicious comes in and delivers as well. And then there's a song up Upside Down featuring Ashley Sorrell and Benny the Butcher. It's an incredibly menacing interpolation of Tom's Diner. I have a weird obsession with that song and I think this does a really good job of bringing that familiar melody in. Royce just continues to solidify his status as legendary, deadly, and incredible lyricist. And then Benny is one of the hardest MCs of this generation so it really comes through with like a one-two punch. All of these songs in the S tier I would say are 20% skippable. In A tier, we have songs like Pendulum featuring Ashley Sorrell. I really dig this vintage sound of like a worn out cassette tape or maybe like a record player that's losing its juice. It's somewhat ironic that he says that they're going to rob the rich and leave them with the bill. He isn't necessarily the richest man in the world, but his net worth is a million dollars according to Google. I mean, that's more money than I can imagine. We also have the song Tricked featuring King Crooked, where they talk about all the ways that people have been tricked. This includes the assertion that vaccines cause autism? 
Royce the five nine son is autistic and this is something that he believes and he got nominated for a Grammy and he said that vaccines cause autism. I'm not sure how that happened. Overlooking that, it does have a pretty sick dark neon vibe and a very nice feature. There's also the song Young World featuring Vince Staples and G Perico. It has a very jazzy, bluesy riff that forms the base of a very smoky beat. Feels kind of noir. Vince Staples is super underrated, honestly, and G Perico does really well on this track as well. All these songs in A tier are very good. I would say that they're 30% skippable. In the B tier, we have the songs I Don't Age, which is pretty mediocre beat, but it's elevated by Royce's skills. We've got I Play Forever featuring Raph. It's slower, it's not quite as menacing, but it does have a cool vintage feel, which like I said, I'm really into that sound right now. There's the song FUBU featuring Conway the Machine. Unfortunately, Conway kind of phones it in on this one. I mean, he still does well, but I've just heard his other music and I know how great he can be. But you know, it's a pretty standard Griselda type beat, very dark, very noir, and of course Royce still delivers. There's a song Black Savage which features Cy Ari the Kid, White Gold, Cy High the Prince, and T.I. There's just too many features from artists that are really good, and it crowds the song. Granted, they all do really well still, but it just is not quite up to its potential. And then there's the song Hero featuring White Gold. It's a pretty light-hearted piano R&B beat. Pretty much it's just a, hey, sorry, I once made a song that said bad stuff about my dad. That's all Royce really has to say in this song. All of these songs I still think are very good. Royce, once again, delivers on every single one. I'd say that the beat tier is 35% skippable. In the C tier, we have songs like Overcomer featuring West Side Gun. It is definitely a very classic West Side Gun beat, just like one sample played over and over again. Makes you wonder, is this really a beat at all? It's very predictable as far as West Side Gun's lyrics go, you know. He sold dope and he sold crack and he is a drug dealer. Those are three things that you need to know about West Side Gun. Thankfully, Royce's verse kind of adds an actual beat to it, really rounds out the sound of the song. There's the song Rhinestone Do-Rag, which is pretty short. It's just one verse that has kind of a soul beat. This one is worth it because it brought me to this pick of Royce the 5'9 wearing a rhinestone do-rag. He tells you to Google it, and, and I did, and I wasn't disappointed. There's also My People Free featuring Ashley Sorrell again. It is a vibraphone type jazzy beat with an upright bass. Apparently Royce decided he should sing a verse in this song, which is uh, fine, I guess. All of these songs in the C tier, they're not the greatest on the album, but I still would keep them around. I'd say they're 45% skippable. In the D tier, we've got the song Mr. Grace Intro, which has a dad teaching his six-year-old some of the most sad and disturbing lessons of all time, and some that are just confusing, like how to say group economics in Spanish. Plus, Royce really just has like a tiny verse on this one. And then there's also the song Dope Man featuring Imani and Cedric the Entertainer. It's got a really obnoxious chorus, honestly. It's just super annoying and it's not memorable otherwise. So these two songs in the D tier, I'd have to say are 60% skippable. Mathematically, adding everything up, this album as a whole is 36% skippable. Royce is an undeniable force as an MC, and having produced or co-produced every single song on this album, he holds his own in that respect as well. This is definitely a standout album for the year, and a standout album for Royce himself. Alright, let's shuffle our music and see which album I'll be reviewing next. Alright, we're just going to go into our music library here, go into albums, and hit shuffle. Alright, looks like the next album I'll be reviewing is It Was Good Until It Wasn't by Kevani. If you like what I'm doing here, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications, leave a comment below, let me know what you think about Royce the 5'9", let me know what you think about the allegory, let me know what you think about vaccines. <laughs> I believe that all musical opinions are valid and I'd love to hear yours. 
I will leave links in the description below for the many music videos for this album, as well as links to my podcast, Music Meritocracy, my playlist for Best of 2019, and my playlist for Best of 2020, which I have very little time to continue to update. I'm Trent Windsor, and this is The Perfect Shuffle.